Um, I guess I'll do just a little introduction. So I'm Kelly Lair, and I'm the gallery director and curator here at 211 South, which is a contemporary art gallery uh, focused on regional and local artists. And we're inside the offices of Hinkle and Volkers at 211 South Main Street. Um, and we've got um, Christopher Schultz and Adam Fullweiler here from uh, the University of Arkansas. So our first um, MFA call for art. Um, and they were the winners of that contest. Um, and the show's just, we've had it up for about three months, getting ready to come down. Um, so excited to have you guys here. And um, I think the work like really worked well together. I had some good conversations with the work. Um, I love the piece that we can look at later that you guys did together. And do you wanna just maybe introduce yourself really quick and talk about like kind of your work? For sure, for sure. Um, do you want to start? Or? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I'm Christian Schultz. Uh, I am a, an artist, uh, works primarily in uh, the physical media. Um, so we're talking collage, um, sculpture, uh, assemblage, um, all sorts of stuff. There's a lot I won't touch. Um, a lot of my work explores play, um, the ability to uh, think on the spot, shift, and move. Um, the ability to make mistakes and learn from such mistakes. Uh, I'm a big fan of ad hoc construction, and I like to bring that into spaces whenever I set up for a show. There's some instances uh, in this room where, um, you know, I wasn't quite sure what was happening until the day of, um, and I think those are moments that I cherish whenever working with, uh, with objects and, and art making. Um, yeah, Adam? Yeah, I'm Adam Fulweiler. Um, third year currently at the University of Arkansas in painting. Um, my work, primarily abstract, deals a lot now with collage as well, uh, which I think initially is what maybe tied our work together for Kelly. Uh, my work may, maybe being a little bit more painterly and, and Chris's work maybe coming a little bit more from a drawing perspective, uh, but our marks vibing together really well. Uh, yeah, and a lot of my work is interested in combining you know, disparate, different uh, sensorial perspectives into single pieces, and then also thinking about the pairings of multiple pieces together as one, and uh, kind of the connections that can be made by doing that. Cool. Well, um, I think it's always interesting, right, to have an exhibition and get to see your work up. Um, were there, was there anything that you felt like you sort of learned about your work from from putting the show together that you could share? Yeah, I mean, it was a really great opportunity to show with Chris, you know, being, we both were at the University of Arkansas, and uh, even as grads, you don't end up showing your work in the same space like ever, uh, but you see each other's work, you know, in each other's studios or in different crits, um, but you never really have the opportunity to like come together as like a graduate cohort and, uh, and have a show, a two-person show or group show or, or whatever. So, I mean, this was a great opportunity, and um, I think we knew before we were even asked that our work would look great in a show together, so it was just a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree with that. It's like we were working alongside each other, and like, you know, we'd look over, it's like when you're in class, like looking at the other person's paper or something, like, what are they doing over there, you know? <laughs> uh, there's always something cool cooking up in your studio, and I think one of the things, um, that everything started to click was when we were doing our studio visits for the show, you know, with the with the intent of like what pieces can work together. And then we started seeing like you know like your drawings over there that we may look at later, with the you know just really awesome scratchy marks, you know, like those totally speak with uh, an inner conversation with some of the the mark making that I was making. But we never really you know what I mean like we never really made those connections before. So um, it was nice to sort of discover those things together. Yeah. Um, scale too. I mean, just thinking about scale, like Adam, like you know you work really large <laughs> often I work really small and I think those but they, they still communicate in a way that's like yeah. you know you can start to pick out shape color form in the smaller works and translate them over into the bigger works mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah and a lot yeah. of the shapes and forms that are present in the paintings are actually the shapes and forms of like your work itself <laughs> yeah, right yeah. like yeah. the, right, the right. plexi pieces yeah like the triangles yes. and the rectangles yeah. and then looking at this painting you know right behind us it's yeah. like <laughs> The same shapes right. are in the in the work. Yeah, it's almost as they were cut out of my paintings, and then Chris recombobulated them, <laughs> yeah. or, and, or vice versa. You know, I like took Chris's little mm -hmm. shapes and then put them in yeah. blew them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it worked out well. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think it also creates like a really nice sense of rhythm, like to move around the exhibition and, and to go from the really small work to the big work. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a nice pacing too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the scale shift is really important too. It helps helps transport you between places, and I think that's that's important when looking at this work and kind of living with it. Mm -hmm. Is being able to scale down and scale up, um, and not and feel like you're not losing anything within that transfer. You know, mm -hmm. it's fluid. Yeah, and scale has such a big impact, right, on our experience of art and how we how we see it and how we mm -hmm. we feel about it. Um, so it's definitely something that I think you you guys highlighted here in this in the show. Yeah, I think it goes along with the title of our show, you know, intimate immensity. We're putting that label on both our small work and our large work, really. Mm -hmm. The large work having qualities of intimacy and being mm -hmm. immense, and then the small work also having uh, more intimate because of the scale, but then very like immense as well. So it's like, right. you know, uh, all the work that we chose for the show, we were very much thinking about those qualities. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Um, do we want to talk about the piece that you guys did together? Well, I love this piece. Yeah. I think it's yeah. just, it's really dynamic mm -hmm. and um, it really works. Mm -hmm. And I love that you guys built it together, like yeah. as like from the ground up as a collaborative piece. I feel like we don't see that a lot, right? Yeah. We don't see a lot of artists building work. We're sort of all, you know, we're in our studios mm -hmm. doing our own thing. Um, and sometimes people like collaborate towards the end or something, mm -hmm. but to build something from the ground up, I think it's just, really exciting and um i love that you guys did that for our show yeah. so yeah. and i hope you'll be able to use it maybe to apply to another show yeah. somewhere yeah. yeah yeah um so do you want to talk about like the process and like how was that working together for sure well um so this piece started i think it started when you were like so what are the dimensions <laughs> gonna be <laughs> this like 48 48 by 48 that's a good size uh, we wanted something that kind of could exist between some, the smaller work and the larger work. So mm -hmm. I think scale is kind of where we started in terms of like getting the game plan down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we hadn't really had an opportunity to collaborate on our work, you know, prior. I mean, you know, we worked alongside each other for yeah. for years, uh, but we never had an opportunity to to sort of pass an uh, artwork back and forth or work on something together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, you know, I've worked with uh, uh, collaboratively where, you know, maybe you, you finish a piece and you, you give it to someone else and there you, there you go, they have it and whatever they do, they do. Yeah. And then maybe they pass it back, you know, but this was very much the both of us in the studio yeah. going patch by patch, arranging and composing um, in tandem. And I think that was a really interesting experience. I mean, that, you know, discoveries were made, um, you know, in, in, in real time. I think that was really important. There was a communication happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah working in that kind of like round robin method can mm -hmm. either work or it doesn't work. Like yeah. there's no in between, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. And it really worked, you mm -hmm. know. Like well, well, Chris, you worked on some of these uh, mm -hmm. like plastic uh, clear pieces in your own studio, and I created some of the canvas pieces to get by in my own studio, and then we came together and then sewed it all uh, as a like as a group, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it became like putting together this weird puzzle or something uh, of, from pieces that were from two different boxes or mm -hmm. something, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, it ended up vibing. And, and we knew it was going to. It was just like the pressure of like, oh, we got to make a piece for this show together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's never done that before. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, going further, like being a, a grad student, like you never have time to do a collaboration round robin with yeah. another grad. <laughs> like, so that was just an op awesome opportunity to, mm -hmm. to be able to have the time to do that. So, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 Do you guys think that, um, I mean, speaking of, of deadlines, right? So mm -hmm. you, you you had a deadline with the show to put this together. Do you guys feel like that helped you generate like in the studio or does that, is that kind of a problem? Like, mm -hmm. do you feel like, where did, where do you feel, where well, do you fall in that? I like deadlines for work. <laughs> you know, like, I'll keep touching the work indefinitely, yeah. you know, yeah. shifting things, drawing over things, erasing stuff. Um, if not given this sort of um, final, like, it, it, you know, whatever yeah. it is is finished by this time. So I, I, I do like that, and it, it, it pushed us to have a couple studio days together, and I think, what did we do? We shot for like two, three, and then maybe we added an extra one, because like we, we, we felt we needed the time to, to get there, because yeah. a finish, I guess the idea of a finished state is also a thing that like, if you, you know, my idea of a finished state versus Adam's might be different, right? Um, so getting to the point where we're like, you know what, that's the final touch, 
um, experiencing that with another person was really interesting. Yeah. You know, it was, because everyone feels a little different. It's like, oh, you know, we can still add more, or oh, we've added too much, you know? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know where your idea is. That yeah, way. I mean, and I could be like, yeah, this is so finished. And you'd be like, yeah, I guess it's <laughs> finished. So. And it's like, it's hard to be like so affirmative when you're working mm -hmm. with another person because you kind of got to find that finish together. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. It's about trying to find that middle ground. And I think we, we arrived there. Mm -hmm. But it was funny because we're like, let's just try and do this collaborative piece. And we told Kelly about it. And Kelly's like, on the promo materials, like, there'd be a 48 by 48 collaborative piece. And we're like, like all right, no. I guess it's got to be good. <laughs> I guess I guess we are yes. uh, going to do that now. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, you know, it came together and it was it was a blast. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, and I love the title too, the, the fresh grass. You fresh guys mode, switched, yeah. Or freshly yeah. mode. Yeah. Like, did, how did that come about? Well, um, in, in a couple of different ways. So a yeah. lot of our work deals with like play, with the space for play, thinking about yard, thinking about childhood and stuff like that. Um, and also, uh, largely this, this mark making right here <laughs> looks like yard lines, essentially, you know, oh, freshly okay. mowed grass. So it, you know, it, it sort of works on, on both levels there. Um, but it very much was um, the reflection of a space for us to, to play and to explore um, this 48 by 48 area. And of course, we ended up breaking that because I think it's 48 by 48 if you, if you count this right here. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we ended up breaking the this, this sort of square format by adding this this fun little yellow part down the here. The mini golf course. Right? The mini the mini yeah, golf course down there. Yeah, I yeah. Love it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think the title was both a byproduct of like the working method uh, of us being in the studio together, really playing. Like this was a very playful mm -hmm. process of like putting together work in this way, sewing things together, and like piecing it. And it's a much of very much a trial and error process. Yeah. Um, but then it also started coming out of the imagery and the palette, and there's like. Yeah. A, a very distinct kind of uh, visual idea of play, like especially like in the, I'm joking around calling this a mini golf course, but you know it definitely has that vibe of like a plinko game or like oh, some yeah. sort of some sort of game. Or yeah. and you know I talked about this being like a, a puzzle being created from pieces from two different boxes, you know. Right. So like there's a lot of play metaphor that is just wrapped up into the work, both um, like in the working method and also visually. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Well, speaking of play, so I also really love these, um, Adam, these very playful, um, I, I'm trying to remember if you used oil, oil pastel, but it definitely kind of has that look of, of crayon, which yeah. I feel like relates to your work too, Chris, mm -hmm. um, with your big drawings over here. And when I first saw these, I was like, oh wait, is that Adam or Chris? Or like, you know, I just sort of had that um, really tied the work together. Do you want to talk about these? Yeah, I mean, these were kind of different for me. You know, I created them when we were in lockdown out of our studios in our, you know, little apartment bedrooms trying to make it work mm -hmm. during grad school and still make work. And uh, it was like, it was hard to make work in general, I think, for many people that are artists mm -hmm. in that time. But mm -hmm. uh, so it was kind of like a, how can I make as little stakes as possible and still create some work? And it was kind of like not trying to create too many rules and just restricting myself to like, you know, eight by 10 paper and oil, pa oil pastel and like graphite color pencil and like just trying to be as simple as possible and just, you know, mm -hmm. try to keep the stakes low and not, you know, push myself to be making like massive work and trying to just cram it into my little space. So yeah, yeah, I mean, and it, like the marks definitely uh, kind of point towards frustration and like, mm -hmm. it, it's all, you know, it comes from that time, title kicking and screaming. <laughs> um, but it also is like a remembrance of childhood play too in the work, like mm -hmm. how would mm -hmm. I make these drawings if I was younger or... Um, yeah. yeah, I think you guys both really connect to that sense of like playfulness and that I think we all have that feeling of like play as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're an artist or not. Um, and like reconnecting with that and finding a way to bring that into your life today, yeah. I think is, is one of the great things that the show kind of like talks about. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. And there's not a lot of opportunities for play, you know, it's, it's so serious all the time, you know, so right. it's nice to, you know, especially with the last uh, uh, year or so of, of just constant stress, you know, it's like, yeah. it's nice to like, uh, to be able to do that, to, to make some very aggressive marks on a piece of paper, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> you know, it feels yeah. good. It's a release. It really is. You yeah. Know, so. It almost takes effort 
right? Yeah. To like, <laughs> to like mentally put yourself, to, to bring in play to, yeah. to what you're trying to do. But mm -hmm. it is, it is there. Mm -hmm. Like it just, you have to be intentional about it sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't happen spontaneously. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's funny too, you know, these drawings I, like because I was putting in such little stakes on them, you know, they were like thrown in the corner in the studio. Like, yeah. Not to be cared about, not to really ever be sh be shown, really. And then Chris is like, "Hey, what are these?" Yeah. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, "Oh, those things? Yeah." And Chris is like, "Oh, we got to show yeah. these." Well, he's like, "There are like twenty of them. Yeah, a ton of them. Yeah." And I'm like yeah. sifting through all these. I'm like, "They're all beautiful. They're all perfect. Bring them all." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things. Like these were kind of uh, not necessarily fitting into my definition of finished. Yeah. Mm. But it definitely fits into Chris's yeah. idea of finished. Yeah. Right. So you like made me reevaluate my own idea of finished, oh, that's which crazy. I think has been good for where the work's going in the studio now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of uh, it's opened up my idea of, of finished a little bit more. I think. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, do you guys want to maybe look at another yeah, let's work? Yeah, sure. Chris, do you want to talk about this piece? I love it, and I love that. Um, you know. I, you had all these finished pieces, but then when you came and installed the show, you kind of played around, right? And, yeah. and this became its own artwork um, and all the different variations that before you did the final. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. So this work um, has existed in a couple different forms before. Um, so primarily uh, before installing in this space, um, it lived on these just shelves that were about you know this one inch by one inch poplar. Um, what a, you know, something that I was excited about in this space was the opportunity to create a work that responded to the space, right? Kind of like built on site almost. All the pieces were finished, they were already completed. Um, but the sort of uh, uh, bringing them together and composing them on site felt important to me. Um, just to, just to, re to react what's, to what's around it. Um, so this piece right here is called Through the Hills and it, uh, you know, it exists with many pieces within one. So all of these works here have been shown individually before, maybe on a similar shelving system uh, together, but never in this, uh, this combination here. So it's really about exploration. Um, Through the Hills is a, is a reference to, um, to hiking, <laughs> to being in nature, to exploring, um, and that, this, the freedom that comes with that. So there's a lot of imagery in here that references uh, hills, uh, mountains, houses, um, grass, plants, um, all very abstract, uh, but the composition of them together um, also um, references a, a map or a sort of a charted course. Um, the tiered system, so installing in this space, um, we hung with, uh, with wires you can see here. Um, getting it to, to work in space uh, without it sort of like falling forward or the pieces falling off, it's very delicate. And that's something I appreciate about the work. It's it's sort of that hesitancy of like, these are precious things on a shelf that can be touched or else they'll fall and break. I love this piece too that you put. It's it's something that has existed with these smaller um, uh, plexi works. And these are, uh, I'm really tempted to like pick one up whenever I talk about these and just like yeah. casually, but like, I'm like, I'm hands off right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it just comes down. Um, uh, it's existed with these little plexi uh, works right here, and these 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 are collages that have been um, uh, uh, scanned in images of previous drawings, reprinted, cut, collaged, um, and sort of uh, put through the the uh, reproduction um, of my own studio practice. So they're they're sort of um, uh, legacy pieces. Like you know, there's this piece right here also exists elsewhere in the gal uh, the gallery. Uh, this piece right here has uh, you know. Um, that, that interior right there is actually the interior right here. Um, that is the same mark making. So um, there's a sense of reproduction and like a family tree that exists in these. Um, whereas this one has always felt like, I mean, it's, it's not part of that network, right? It's its own, it's its own original. So I, you know, I never really thought to put the two together. Um, but when we got into the space and we were looking at these, you know, I did, I did want to hang that one in here. Um, and looking for a space for it to fit, it fit right there. And Adam suggested just, you know, you know, just hang out with these guys, and it does, and it works. Um, yeah, and you know, I like the the contrast between the the paper and the the plexi. I mean, you have like that rigid kind of uh, permanence of the of the plexi there, and then this paper that's really fragile and just will, you know, mm -hmm. blow when the AC kicks on, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's another interesting sort of juxtaposition. I think mm -hmm. that's reflected in the work and. Um, I also think it's so interesting, right? Like after an exhibition that 
the work then comes back, but it's sort of like it embeds this this meaning, you know, that it's been installed in a certain way, it's had different relationships, um, and it kind of, I think it's interesting that it takes that on, and, mm -hmm. and you can move it forward too. For sure, for sure. I like the idea of things morphing. Um, you know, there are some pieces that are maybe in a frame or, you know, uh, painted on, on canvas that are going to stay that way, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I like the idea that these will move and shift, you know, the next show that they're in, um, you know, this thing might, you know, like cut it in half and, and, and you know, flay it out and have it horizontal. Who knows? You know, it's, <laughs> uh, I like the, the idea of possibilities I'm really into. And I'm, in, I'm into yeah. the idea of, of making, uh, leaving room to, to make those discoveries even when you're setting up, you know, <laughs> installing yeah. in a space. Like, there, there's still discoveries that are made. Um, yeah. I think that's a very important thing to hold on to. Nothing, nothing is totally finished, right? Even when you hang it on right. the wall. It's, it's always in conversation what's next to it and, yeah. and the like. And then these um, right here too, do you mm -hmm. want to talk about them? I mean, they're yeah. gorgeous collages and I think you're using some of the same mm -hmm. um, mark making and is it the same process where you're copying, you know, taking work, copying it? Mm -hmm. and, okay. Yeah, so, okay, these are uh, two separate pieces here. We've got Movie and Yawning Mountain below. So uh, just talking about this sort of uh, family tree of these uh, collages that just build off of each other. Yawning Mountain is actually what I call like a... Uh, a grandparent piece to the rest. So this was one of the first collages that I did that produced all of these others. Oh. Um, so you'll see like situations in here, like this area right here, um, this opening within the within the mountain. I mean, it's like it's the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that piece was made uh, around this time last year. Um, it, it's a little bit different than, than these pieces here because you can actually see like the the sort of uh, physical nature of some of the mark making like you see the crispiness of the the spray paint on this on this uh, Paper here, you know, you can see that texture, right? Um, all the mark making is original. There's original mark making on those too, but uh, you know being being the first of its kind It sort of holds a special special place. I wanted to add it into this exhibition I felt it was important to to be a sort of uh, cornerstone piece for the other collages something you can come back to You know you look at this mm -hmm. piece you walk mm -hmm. around you see some mark making you're like wait a second That looks like that but kind of scaled up or you know, you take a little segment out of out of this one, and you see it in another one, um, sort of a cornerstone piece there. Uh, but it's very much about um, process, and it's very much about um, taking in my own drawings and um, s you know staying with one co one collage, one drawing. You know, seeing how many variations can kind of spawn out from that, right? And it's mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. infinity. You know, I mean, it goes yeah. on forever. It is like <laughs> right. it is still going on, and it goes on forever. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. And that's, that's something that I've been thinking about with uh, some of the work that I'm making right now is like how far can that go and how does the reproduction um, happen when it's not in, in physical um, uh, uh, media. Um, and that's, that's something that movie was, a, was a, probably the most recent piece in this, in this gallery that I made. Um, and it's, it's a reference to, um, you know, it's, it's inspired by the visual fl uh, flow of films and animation. Um, so just thinking about how collage can um, can suggest movement, can, can, can suggest um, an animated quality to it, um, which has led me to pursue, uh, you know, uh, animated GIFs and the like and stuff like that. So it's very much about uh, cutting, pasting, um, and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. that sense of movement and transformation mm -hmm. like we were talking about here, it's just in a different, different media. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, I love it. And, and speaking of like a generative piece, it kind of makes me think, Adam, of your piece, that the cut piece that you said kind of like started a lot of your mm -hmm. your new development. You want yeah. to talk about that piece? Yeah, sure, go ahead. In hiding, I love this piece. Yeah, so this piece uh, kind of marked a shift in the way I assemble work. Uh, I was kind of searching for ways to combine materials that don't generally mix, mm -hmm. such as like oil pastel and acrylic paint. Those are kind of polar opposites. They won't really work together. I can't put acrylic over. And like marks that you get on ungessoed plain paper with a graphite pencil is something you can't really get on top of like paper that's been painted already. Mm -hmm. So I ended up coming to sewing this paper together as opposed to gluing because again, like oil pastel and glue don't really mix either. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I ended up uh, trying to sew paper together, which I thought maybe wouldn't work, but. Uh, it did, and it, it kind of opened up a whole new range of opportunities. As you can see, like the collaborative piece that Chris and I did is all sewn together, and a lot of my new work has been sewn together, and 
uh, has been able to be viewed on two sides, um, you know, allowing for it to be taken off of a rigid support. Um, I found that the sewing machine also kind of provided a world-given limitation uh, to the process that kind of opened up opportunities for discovery, you know, and I've arrived at solutions or arrived at problems that I may not have uh, arrived at uh, with a, just a regular painting process. Um, so I found that to be really, um, had a lot of potential for like growth in my work in general. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, obviously, you know, all the green again, right? Thinking about like grass and nature and being mm -hmm. outside, I think speaks really nicely with Chris's work and that also that kind of sense of play and exploration um, that that collaging technique also kind of lends. Do you want to talk yeah. a little bit about this piece? For sure. So this is Garden View. Um, it's uh, crayon, uh, color pencil, and some graphite, um, and possibly some charcoal. Uh, <laughs> it's up for debate. Who knows what's happening? Um, but I'm not about to, uh, to, to, to touch and find out. Uh, but nonetheless, on uh, unstretched, uh, untreated, just raw canvas. Um, so this is um, one of the, the larger works in the, in the show, and maybe the, maybe the biggest thing that I've made in the um, in ever. Um, I, I tend to gravitate more towards small, more intimate uh, scales. Um, but there was there's was something freeing about the the opportunity to work on a canvas of this size with crayon and with with colored pencil. Um, getting lost in the mark making. I mean, it's it's very much about. Um, sitting in here and, and scribbling each and every one of these little lines for hours and hours and getting lost in that. Um, and, you know, when I was making this, I was thinking about the, the, the moments I, you know, I've gotten lost in the past, whether that's been, you know, on a hike out in nature or as a kid playing in the backyard. And I think um, just going back to, to being in an open space in the outdoors and in nature and in the yard, um, Garden View is very much about um, the exploration that happens back there. Um, you know, I was thinking about uh, uh, hanging out in the backyard and the worlds I'd create as a kid with my sister and then the view that uh, my mom would have from the window, you know what I mean, of us mm -hmm. just back there doing our own thing, digging holes, um, I don't know, making sticks into swords and beaming each other with them, who knows? <laughs> but um, that, that kind of exploration, um, uh, you know, and getting lost in, the, in, this, in this field of mark making was really important. Um, it's a little bit tighter up here. And this is like the leafy green area, and it's a lot looser down here. And it's another one of those situations, and then we've talked about this a little bit, um, we're talking with you today, is like finished states, and like, where do you call it good? You know, like, at, at one point, um, I was, you know, you can see it right here, and this is something I love about this, is you see the, you see the process happening, right? Some folks may look at this and be like, ah, oh, well, it's not complete, these little green, you know, this bunch doesn't, doesn't flow all the way through, but like, there's, there's something beautiful about that sort of hesitancy, and like, it was very important to put all those little green scribbles up in there in that tight space. But as soon as I started getting down here, there's the moment where it needed to be cut off and then there needed to be a bit of a breathing room down there. Um, and we have those looser lines and that this guy that come, kind of comes up and down and these red marks and then you, and then you just lose it. Um, I think, you know, I just wanted to create a space uh, to get lost in and the scale certainly helps with that. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. you, could just, you could just step on into the garden here. Um, yeah, yeah, and it being on unstretched canvas like this, like I love the idea of it just kind of flowing, right? Yeah. Um, it's not, it's not stretched, it's not rigid. Um, mm -hmm. So even, even with its scale, it still feels a little bit inviting in my mm -hmm. mind. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it is. It could just as well be a blanket or something. You know, <laughs> like it could be a rug. It could be, it could be draped over something else. Um, it's yeah. very open. It's open. It's light. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it sometimes it takes a lot of courage to stop right like yeah. not yeah courage or courage. exhaustion <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but yeah no it does it does because like there's there's the idea of like when you when you start something to complete it for the sake of completion right mm -hmm. um but but breaking it off you have that moment where, where the line does get broken or the the rhythm is interrupted and stopped it's like that's a moment to question it and, you know why does it get stopped and and is it just as good when it stops in that weird little shape there yeah, yeah. Well, I'm curious, was there anything that sort of um, the impetus for going big, mm -hmm. right? So you were making all these small works. Mm -hmm. Anything happen or? I, I feel it's important to to work within your, what is convenient and best for your own studio practices. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was kind of like, if I'm going to work with something big, 
I need it to work with me and not against me. You know what I mean? I need to be able to move and shift um, with it. And just throwing this out on the ground and just scribbling on it for a while, um, it felt right, you know? And it felt like I could spread out as, as much as I want to and discover when the stopping point is. When I'm working with the smaller collages, I mean, you're, you're, you're constrained with how much space you have down there. Right. You know what I mean? Which is nice. Um, but it's also a different kind of mark making, right? It's a lot tighter and it's more in the wrist and this is more in the arm. Um, you know, you can really, you can really stretch out and get some of those bigger marks that, that you don't get in the smaller pieces. Awesome. Um, and then what about this piece, Adam? Um, of colored verbs and adjectives shrinking from the light. Yeah, long title. <laughs> uh, we were talking about uh, forgetting titles uh, before we started recording here. And I think I make myself have that issue a lot because my titles are so long. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, a lot of my work is interested in, in language and uh, specifically the crossover between painting and poetry. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my titles are being pulled from um, different poems that I really admire or uh, also my own writing too. Um, so this piece specifically is coming out of a John Ashbery poem. Um, and uh, I'm thinking a lot about rhythm and tempo, uh, and I'm also um, like a big jazz nut. Uh, I played trumpet for many years, still do. Um, so music is really important to my process and my environment in the studio. Um, so thinking about jazz, thinking about improvisation and, and tempo, rhythm, um, and these yellow uh, paint skins are what they are, which is acrylic paint uh, poured onto plastic and then peeled off. It becomes kind of a material that can be cut up, collaged, and manipulated. Um, so these yellow marks are kind of serving as a, a tempo maker or, mm -hmm. or, or serving for towards rhythm and thinking about verse as well in poetry and how those two things are similar. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's, it's collage paint skins and uh, yeah, thinking a lot about rhythm and tempo. Mm -hmm. And then these uh, gradients are kind of serving as more of an atmospheric kind of a, a more deeper idea of, of where poetry has changing meaning and shifting meaning depending on who reads it, right? And paintings mm -hmm. can serve that same sort of uh, mm -hmm. uh, like way of uh, finding meaning for the viewer mm -hmm. too. So. Well, I love that. I love how you're incorporating music and uh, poetry, and you you have a writing practice as well. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you balance those two, the writing and the painting? Yeah, I mean. I haven't written too much in the last like six months, uh, but uh, I was writing a lot like last year. Um, and that was the time when I found it easier to write and sit at the computer or sit at, um, with a piece of paper and a pen than it, I found to like go to the studio or even just make work in general. So mm -hmm. I, I find it to be like more of a, um, a natural tendency. If I feel like I'm, I should be writing, then I'm gonna write. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna try and force it upon my practice. Okay. Um, but once I do have this kind of backlog of writing, when I have a time that I feel like I can be productive, uh, I use that writing to fuel the work as well. And um, maybe we can pan over to the, the bigger piece that actually does have some writing in it. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this piece uh, was taken from a piece of fiction that I wrote last year, um, really heavily inspired by Tal Calvino and his novel Invisible Cities. Mm. Um, so the piece started out with essentially writing a, a large paragraph of the novel on the canvas itself with uh, a brush attached to like a 10 foot pole, literally, nice, yeah. um, trying to, to get away from being too tight with. Mm -hmm. um, the script that I was writing it in. Um, so there's moments where the text peeks out. You can see it here, you can see come, or you can see different words. So you realize that there's something deeper that's hidden below these veils of paint. Um, and it, it's being constantly pushed forward and pushed back. And then there's moments of transparency, you know, the bottom right hand corner here where there's a red veil, but you can still see that there's uh, letter forms that are hidden underneath. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, this piece was kind of an effort to play with the, the actual use of language in the paintings, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to taking the language and then shifting it into more abstract shape and mark. Yeah. Did you, 
did that influence your um, pieces after this, or was this more of a one-off experience with the direct use of language? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple pieces that I have played with it uh, that aren't in the show, but that are kicking around the studio, uh, and many of them have since been recycled because they yeah. just didn't work. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it had a lot to do with the scale of this piece mm -hmm. and that the relationship between the size of the text and the size of the image itself, mm -hmm. it, 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 it helped the text not become too much of a distraction. Yeah. Where a lot of the pieces that I was trying to experiment with it back in the studio were on smaller uh, panels or canvases and the text size became uh, mm -hmm. too big in relationship to the size of the support mm -hmm. or the text became so small that it became too tight and I was like yes. writing with it in too much of a controlled manner where then mm -hmm. it became distracting because it was so much unlike the rest of the surface mm -hmm. uh, and how that was treated. Yeah. Yeah, there's such a long history of words in paintings, right? Yeah. And I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Um, and I, I do, I think this one really works, but it's hard to make it work. Yeah, it really was a battle. I mean, I worked on this piece for a very long time. Um, initially, almost all the text was visual, visual, visible, and then I was trying to make that work, and it was just not happening. Yeah. Like, um, certain, because I, I wrote uh, like a paragraph in, in red paint, and then I wrote another paragraph in like this kind of grayish blue paint, mm -hmm. and then I wrote another paragraph in brownish paint that's almost entirely hidden alongside this green paint too so like mm. almost the whole like short story I would, I would call it was mm. written on the surface so mm. it, I was kind of using trying to use the text itself as a veil so mm -hmm. the, have so much text overlapping each other that it became uh, unintelligible mm -hmm. unreadable but it still was just too much of one thing and it became like this huge beautiful like horizontal Composition, right. um, and it, it, I was like so attached to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I just sat in the studio for like a couple months, really, before I ended up going back into it. And I think that time away from it, you know, I turned it around, faced the wall, so I wasn't, I wasn't constantly thinking about it. And that time away really allowed me to be like, okay, this piece obviously isn't going to work this way, so I'm just going to obliterate it. I'm going to do the craziest thing I possibly can do. Mm -hmm. So I actually built a, I make some custom tools in the studio, so mm -hmm. I've got like a six foot long squeegee, mm -hmm. and I, I was like, this piece needs something really big, and I just need to like cover up as much of this as I can as quickly as possible. Big move. <laughs> so I built, I bought like those cheap chip brushes from, yeah. from Home Depot, and I got two pieces of wood and I attached like 15 chip brushes to a piece mm -hmm. of wood, so I made yes. like a massively long brush. So like this blue mark is coming from that. These this was this all this blue was like one huge loaded up brush, one huge sweep of the body. Yeah. I just needed to like obliterate it as quickly as possible. Yeah. And, and take it to a place where I'm like, all right, now this piece is really garbage now. Okay. So now how do I bring it back? It like kind of gives yeah. you that freedom. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then I'm it's not it's suddenly not precious anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, it can be hard to not take work this big and like bring it to the studio and be like. This is a big thing. This is expensive material. <laughs> yeah. I need to be careful. But that's that can be such a problematic mind space to be in. Is right. To see a surface as precious because then you are tentative. Mm -hmm. You might not um, make uh, choices on the piece that would actually benefit it. Mm -hmm. So I just you know took it past uh, precious and and um, I started collaging with these paint skins again and uh, like the color that's present in the paint skins was painted onto plastic first, the paints poured onto that plastic, and then anything mm -hmm. that was dried on the plastic comes up with the paint skin. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of these areas of yellow and white were already in the plastic and then mm -hmm. got absorbed into the paint skin. And then um, some papers collaged onto here, which is recycled past work mm -hmm. that's been cut up and, and used. Um, and then the last thing that was added was these kind of diamond shapes. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted this piece to feel almost like either water, um, where the diamonds on the surface like really pads and there's a depth, there's something that's very deep. You've got areas of the canvas, like this uh, kind of alizarin crimson color, which is the first layer that was painted. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you know, 40, 50 layers up to the surface where the diamonds are. So there's 
uh, it's a very deep pain um, where some of my other work uh, presents itself a little bit more flat. Um, so it's kind of uh, an effort to get to like an insanely deep pain when you go over this mm -hmm. first layer and then all the way up to the last layer. Yeah, and I love those little places where you can peek through and see the, those first layers. Really nice piece of space. And it, that's great advice too, right? To artists about, um, I like how you said you turned it around so you couldn't see it for a while. And then I'm assuming you had a lot of other work going so you could work on those other pieces and then come back to it when you felt like confident yeah. that you're gonna make those big moves. And Yeah, yeah, I always am somebody who's working on, you know, like half a dozen pieces in a studio at a time. I find that you find solutions in other work that you can bring to uh, maybe a piece that's troubling you in the space. And uh, it's, it's always helpful, you know, especially when you're putting together a show to be like working on lots of work in conjunction because there's like an automatic conversation that happens between the work mm -hmm. uh, without you even trying to make it happen, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, especially the, you know, finding solutions in other work and being able to be like, okay, that worked here. Mm -hmm. What if I did this in this piece that's like being a pain in the butt, you know? Yeah. And usually that's, that's, that's good. And I, so we're, it's right next to this piece, um, Chris, which I love. Yeah. I think Adam, Adam and I both yeah. talked about how much we love this piece. Yeah. Um, and, you know, definitely it's got the layers, and I love this cut that's right through the, um, just through that left side. Mm -hmm. Ancient Lamentation Music Playing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So it's, it's actually kind of, it's interesting to hear you talk about this piece, Adam, next to this piece. Um, this piece also spent some time hiding away. Um, yeah, so this is, um, this is a, a work that I, um, part of it was done in 20, maybe 2013, so some years ago, 2014 maybe, and then the rest of it this summer before the show. So um, this, uh, the, the part in the foreground here, this sort of like rainbow tombstone figure um, mm -hmm. on that newsprint, um, that was made years ago, years ago when I was an undergrad, and I don't know why I kept it, and it's not like I kept it in um, nice conditions, <laughs> you know what I mean, like you can tell it's kind of like worn a bit, mm -hmm. um, but like I was going through some stuff when I was, when I was moving and packing up like my studio, and I found this piece of, uh, this drawing. Like I remember this drawing, but like I don't remember for the life of me like why I kept it. It's just one of those things that like, you file away and then it just becomes part of part of the collection, the the hidden collection of your your being, your studio. And so unveiling this this drawing, I was like uh, I was kind of struck with this uh, the sense of um, reconnecting with my previous self, you know, like with with the past. Um, and what's interesting about it, I mean, it's newsprint, so it's. It ages terribly. It's not archival, you know. Right, so right. it didn't look like this then. You know, it wasn't as yellowed and as as mm -hmm. sort of um, uh, torn and decrepit looking. Um, but but now it's it's aged and, and so have I a bit, you know. Um, so I felt this sort of empathy for the for the work, and that's that's something that I you know I can't say that I've felt with with other work in the show because you know maybe I will five six ten years from now. But mm -hmm. this piece felt important um, in that way. So I wanted to bring it into the fold um, to, to bring it back into conversation with current works um, because there is a conversation of the past that's happening when you when you produce artwork you know you're taking everything that you knew and, and felt and producing it in that moment of time and then you come back and you look at a piece years from then and it's everything that you were feeling then you know it's, it's the past right. right it's like every mark is, a, is an instance of, of time recorded on that piece of paper. Okay. Um, so yeah, I felt it important to, to bring this um, in conversation with my, my current work. Um, the title, um, so an Ancient Lamentation Music Playing, it comes from, have you seen the Justice League movie? I don't know, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> this is weird, but hear me out, it's from the Justice League movie. Um, there's, there's a scene when Wonder Woman uh, like pops into a, a, a bank to like beat up the bad guys and this music is just playing, it's like really epic music and the subtitles just says Ancient Lamentation Music Playing. Um, and it's become like a, a meme from that. So um, it's sort of a play on like that moment of when I found that um, that piece of paper, like you know, just um, just what was happening at an instance um, when the past and the present come together. Um, and I love that. yeah, the, the title just kind of fit because um, it is playful and it doesn't take itself seriously. That piece wasn't serious when I when I created it, but it is now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it. 
because of the time, because of the time that um, that it has existed through, you know, against all odds, um, being non-archival, being just shoveled in a heap of other paper, you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. So yeah, in the uh, the background there, it's uh, um, you know we've got the uh, it's a it's a drawing that I made over the summer, and it's on this uh, you know I left all the little frilly bits, and like some people don't like to have the frilly bits when it's just because like it's it's a signifier of like not good paper, you know what I mean? It's like it came from a notepad, it's just like it's scrap, it's like you know it's you didn't you didn't take it off, uh, but there's there's something about that immediacy of it that I like, and the rawness of having those little frilly bits still on there, the torn edges. Um, I like the relationship too between um, those and then this this edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. So similar kind of uh, uh, disregard of the paper, mm -hmm. um, the, the idea of it not being precious, and that's something that I like about like you discovering the yeah. just making this painting not precious. You know, it's like this this one I started off I was like it's not precious, and then I made it precious. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like the it's like the inverse of that. Um, but yeah, yeah, and I like the, the figure in the in the foreground there. The more I look at it and think about like time and like age, it's the more it reflects like a tombstone. You know, it's like it kind of has that grim kind of uh, feel to it. Like I'm watching this paper age and decay over time, and it's like we're looking at this this sort of uh, this empty tombstone in the in the middle of that green field. It makes me wonder what would happen if you added added a sheet like every five years to the back or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just keep adding layers. Yes, yeah. I'm interested in that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's I think awesome. that's a nice thing about the frillies too, is that like this painting or drawing could be like seen as being kind of sad, really serious, but like mm -hmm. the frillies and like the casual caringness just kind of pushes away. It's like funny, sad. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, it's funny and it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I sure. think this sense of humor is really important. And I mean, in all your work, mm -hmm. you have such a good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I feel like blackness is important and not taking it too seriously. There's moments to take things seriously. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's like being serious about not being serious, right? Yeah. It's like you right. can still have a serious studio practice and still, you know, um, make mistakes, make uh, uh, drawings that hang out in your, in your drawer for, for five, six years and then resurface and it can still be just as serious as the drawing that you spent, you know, um, so much time and effort making uh, into a good drawing, you know? Right. So it's, yeah, it's... It's a balance of that, and it's realizing when when things work, even if they are wonky or they are, uh, you know, an old piece of uh, um, yeah, newsprint. Well, sometimes that's the best work, right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes because life is kind of wonky. It is. It is kind of wonky. <laughs> it is kind of funny. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, and then I think is this piece um, mm -hmm. one of the original pieces that inspired a lot of work? Oh, um, it's oh, it's the one up top. It's the one up top. So oh, yes, 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 okay. yes. Yeah. That's large grassy mound. Um, so it's 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 sort of the the you know it's it's similar to the collage that we saw earlier in the in the frame. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of those, but it's the first one to make its transition into the the uh, the cut acrylic. Um, this piece right here, um, there's it holds a, a special sort of place in the in the lineage. Um, a lot of the cut acrylic, they're they're laser cut, um, so they have these clean edges to them. And you know, I, I draw the thing and then I plug it into the program and then it and then it cuts it with you know with the precision um the one up top i cut with a with a rotary tool a, a dribble <laughs> so I mean, it was messy wow. it was it was uh it was uh you know probably bad to be yeah i was wearing a mask but still nonetheless you have all these bits of plastic that's it was, it was a terrible time but um it was it was a moment where i had this idea of like you can see the sharpie here this is the intended cut I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this plexi, and it's gonna, and we're gonna come around this edge here. It's gonna follow the curve of the, of the work, and it's that's how it's gonna be. Well, I got like two cuts in. I got that cut, and then that cut, and then I decided that like hand cutting this stuff with a rotary tool is just, it's not, you, you don't, you don't get that kind of, yeah, it's not gonna work. But like looking back at this piece, I'm like, it, you have the idea of like expectation versus reality or mm -hmm. plan versus like where you ended up, and like I feel like that's that's very important in the work. Okay, so these pieces on rollers, yeah, so fun. And you guys worked on these together too, right? We did, we did. So uh, yeah, they have an interesting story. So I made these, uh, oh, late, late 2020, spring 2021, and they, they existed in, in more or less this, this state here. Um, the idea was that they could roll around and, and, and sort of exist as um, a movable composition. 
uh, within the gallery. Um, they're made out of foam and they're just put on these casters um, to enable movement. Um, when we were doing studio visits, Adam and I together, um, Adam inherited the, the studio that I moved out of. And these guys were just like sitting in there. We thought, well, we're already collaborating on one piece. Why not collaborate again? And these proposed an interesting um, uh, addition to the space in here. So they are double-sided, you know, as you see. Mm -hmm. um, the idea was Adam could paint on one side and then, you know, I would have my, my drawings on the other side here. And just depending on where you're at in the room, uh, the conversations between each side uh, would interact with either Adam or my, my own uh, work on the wall as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love the conversation between the work on the walls and then these pieces. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. And I love the, the movability about them too, the fact that they are on wheels um, mm -hmm. and just talking about the change and transformation in both your work. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's really nice. And, for some reason, I just love the one without the wheels. It's not, yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those things where it's like, you can move it, but you're, you're gonna have to put a little effort into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hesitancy, you know? And even, even so, if you put art on wheels in a gallery, unless it has a sign that says, move me, it's okay, right. no one's going to move I, it. I, <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, wonder, yeah, I wonder yeah. if anyone's ever moved yeah. these. I, I don't know. I haven't yeah. even turned around. <laughs> yeah. Maybe bumped. But it's it's yeah. the idea of a possibility, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's, right. that's something that Adam and I are talking about as well is the idea that these are constantly changing. I mean, they're made out of foam, so they're easy to cut into. Um, they, can, they can shift around, we can draw over them again, we can cut them in half, they can exist in a lot of different ways, and I think that's, that's something that some, some work does not afford you. Mm -hmm. um, just the ability to, to paint over, to cut, to chop, um, and, and to exist in, in many ways. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, these were worked on a little bit differently than the collaborative uh, canvas piece where you know, Chris kind of already had one side to a pretty resolved state, and then I came in and painted the other side. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of different. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was making two-sided panes as well, so like mm -hmm. um, thinking about how even if these are stationary, just as you walk through the space, it lines up with different areas on the wall, with pieces on the wall. Mm -hmm. And it, it changes the context of those as well. And it's like, this was a great way for us to bring our you know, different kind of styles of making marks, making work, mm -hmm. and then have them essentially be collaged together visually mm -hmm. when you're in the space. Yeah, it's another element of yeah. the collage. Mm -hmm. It's true. So do you, you guys think you'll, you'll use these pieces again in the collaborative piece? Um, do you have anything coming up? Or do you think you'll maybe apply for a show now? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got ideas. Yeah. That's what do. Yeah. Um, I know you probably feel the same way, Adam. Like I was extremely happy when I remember we got everything up on the wall. And I looked around, you know, it, it, it everything speaks to each other in, in such a in such a uh, um, in such a good way. Um, so yeah, um, if these exist the same way, um, who knows? I think they were very much a product of how this space operated. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, you know, depending, yeah, yeah, they could. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, likely. You know, we're going to be applying for another show together, you know, since we have this great two-person show that we put together here, we think it'd be great to do another one. I mean, and no matter what we're making, uh, our studio practices are aligned in such a way that I think it will work no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, these will probably get, you know, like Chris was saying, cut up, recontextualized to what ends up being in the next show. Yeah. Um, but they serve such a great purpose, you know, serving as like visible, visible collide between two two different people's practices. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, it's a great thing to have in the space. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the questions that I received um, just with, with the folks that work here um, at Engel and Bokers was just kind of thinking about how how this show impacted you and your work, and maybe you know where you're headed next. If you want to talk about that. A little. Yeah, so I'm in my third year, so I'm my final year at the University of Arkansas. Uh, in, uh, and so I'm working on my thesis exhibition right now, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a big thing. Uh, so I'm writing a thesis paper and also making a lot of work as fast as I can. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's the idea that you know what everything is doing in the studio. And, like, <laughs> everyone knows that's not true. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting time, you know, I've, I've got a lot of work going right now, and a lot of it's pretty large, and uh, I'm also 
you know, thinking about these pieces and the two-sided relationship and how a work like that can serve a purpose in a, in a space or with the work that's on the wall, I'm going to be probably playing with some um, semi-transparent fabrics that are going to be hung over the window in the gallery, um, mm -hmm. casting light into the space. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that, and uh, Chris and I are going to put together a show application for a space uh, in the wall one too, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm excited about your show. Uh, do you have a date yet? No, not yet. Okay, okay. Probably well, March. Yeah, yeah, sometime in March. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've shifted my practice a little bit since putting on the show, and this show, you know, opened my eyes to collaboration and to, you know, the possibilities uh, that exist when sort of breaking the, the mold that you're in. Um, you know, being in grad school, there's a lot of just like kind of zeroing in on your studio practice, and you're doing that a lot right now, like just like just being in it, just producing, you know, but it's like, this was a breath of fresh air, and I know you felt the same way, just to be able to, to, to put this together, to uh, to work with Kelly, um, producing um, and curating what pieces uh, fit in here, um, how they communicate with each other. I mean, if we had it our way, we probably would have thrown in like 30 more works, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we had to edit down when we showed up, we had like so much work, we're like, oh, this is, you know, we can bring it all, but I think we did a great job in like narrowing down what uh, what works in this in this space. Um, so it was, it was great. So yeah, there are ideas of, of potential um, uh, pairings, you know, new work, old work, um, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, I've shifted my studio practice a bit to, uh, to more of digital uh, means. So I've been uh, working with drawings. Um, you know, I've already been scanning in drawings, high-res images of, of drawings, and I've been animating them. So it was sort of inspired by the, the piece back there movie. I was thinking, well, what if this actually was animated? So I've been making animated GIFs, and I've worked in video before, but there's always been a struggle with me with video, and that's been sound. I love sounds. I don't make music. I've never really been inclined in that in that way, um, and there's a whole world of sounds. So just zeroing in on um, GIFs and just visual stuff, um, and making some interesting explorations in that way. And I've, got, I've got some ideas on how they could exist in space, but you know, it's still up in the air. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's been a good exploration, and heavily inspired by what we've done here, you yeah. know? That kind of energy and that kind of movement. Yeah. Well, we have one more. I think if we want to talk about this painting at all. Yeah, I love that, Chris, that it's like every time you look at it, you can mm -hmm. see something new. Mm -hmm. There's so much, so many layers. And was it a similar process to the other painting, Adam, or a different? Yeah, yeah this was a similar process to the other big one that we just talked about. Um, but this one was the one that I was working on when that one was against the wall. <laughs> okay, all right. So this one is where I actually found a lot of solutions to bring to that piece. Mm -hmm. um, this piece is taken from another Italo Calvino novel, The Final Winter's Night of Traveler. Uh, mm -hmm. And the title of the painting, In a Network of Lines That Enlace, mm -hmm. is a section of that book. And that book is about this reader who gets this book from a bookshop and then starts reading it, and then all of a, goes from page 50, all of a sudden is on page like 150. And then the whole entire novel is basically about this character like trying to find this, these missing parts of this book, and gets led down all of these different novels that eventually like intertwine, um, that are all from different authors, because this author like uh, doesn't exist, the publisher doesn't exist. Yet. So I was thinking a lot about that, of like kind of tossing the viewer around and like, feeling like you're in a different space at one point, or the, like you were just talking about, like finding these different things. It's like a hide and seek kind of process mm -hmm. as a viewer. Um, but yeah, this piece was a lot of fun to make. Uh, and it was started, like both these big pieces actually, which kind of led into the problematic uh, idea of finishing them was they were started before COVID happened. Um, so mm -hmm. they were started in the studio, and then we had to leave our studios so then both these large pieces obviously could not come to my house <laughs> to be worked on. <laughs> so then they had to sit there and lonely for, I don't know how long we were out of our studios, like six months or something like that. Um, and then to come back to a piece that was in process after that long mm -hmm. is hard. Yeah. Um, so I pretty much had to reevaluate them and, and like I was talking about with the other one, you kind of obliterate and just like reset. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this piece is also bringing in some of the sewing that is being collaged onto the stretch canvas, which was the first time I'd done that. 
Um, so this piece <clears throat> being sewn onto this blue checkerboard pattern and then collaged on. Mm -hmm. And this method kind of itself is like serving as like a form of discovery. Like there's something that's concealed and then you can actually like see what's behind it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, playing with a lot of different materials on this painting too. There's pastel, uh, like chalk pastel, and like a paint stains, acrylic paint, paint markers. Yeah, so bringing in some materials that I don't generally bring into a stretch canvas, mm -hmm. so that's fun. Yeah, definitely this this form on the top. What are those materials? It looks this, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a paint skin, okay. um, a really thick one, um, okay. so it's like quarter inch thick. Um, and there's also like um, like joint compound, mm -hmm. like you fill in drywall holes mm -hmm. with. That's mm -hmm. underneath the paint skin. That's been like kind of adhered to the paint when it was still wet. Mm -hmm. And then there is some painting that I've done back on top of the paint skin and then some paint skins I did collage onto that paint skin. So mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a super chunky piece. And mm -hmm. talking about like putting together opposing kind of sensorial spaces or like finding areas, or, like inserting areas that don't necessarily emulsify completely, right? Mm -hmm. Like this piece is not necessarily emulsified with the rest of the painting. But I think that brings in like uh, a moment of unexpectedness and mm -hmm. like, yeah, you're like, well, how does this thing work? Well, and it has its own little ghost over to its right. left, right? Yeah, like it moved or something. Uh -huh. When like you looked away and it was here before, but it wasn't. So it shifted. Yeah, and this piece, I was also thinking about um, slowness in this piece. Even though this piece mm -hmm. seems like kind of frantic, there's like very distinct compositional elements that are kind of directing the time you spend with the painting, you know, these big mm -hmm. arcing moments that are like, okay, maybe you start up here, you go down here, you go up here, you come back down, and then there's these arcs that take you through. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was trying to force time into whoever sees it, you know, and then um, there's rewards, right? There's like these little Easter eggs that you come back and you see yeah. uh, after spending more time with it, too. Mm -hmm. Well, it definitely has such an impact, a, a visual impact when you see it, right? But then it, it also does allow like a slow unfolding, which I think is like, to me, always kind of what I'm looking for, right? Is yeah. like, you want that impact, but then you want to be able to like let a work unfold slowly right. over time. Right. Yeah, I can try and make it work unfold slowly as much as I want, but if there's nothing, if there's no rewards, like, well, that's right. just a bad movie. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gotta be a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks you guys so much for doing the show. Yeah, it's just so much. been such a privilege to work with you. You've been amazing to work with, and I love the show so much. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah thank you. Together.